Hello everyone and welcome to another Lens Studio tutorial. In this video we are going to be learning about the behavior script and we're going to be doing a little bit with tweening as well. So the behavior script is a very useful resource that is provided by Lens Studio. It allows you to do a lot of things that would normally require custom scripting in order to make them work. The behavior script works by allowing you to specify a trigger from a specific event and then specify the response that happens once the event is triggered. So in order to get the behavior script, you need to go into Lens Studio and you need to search behavior script. And then you click the top result here and if you want you can read all about it in the page. They have some great documentation. But if you want to just download it, it's right here. You just click download the behavior script and then you just import it into your scene. So to start, let's add a behavior script to an empty scene object. And I just named this behavior script to make it a little bit more organized. So if you can see here, we have our trigger and this is what we're going to specify to be our event that it's looking for. And then we have our response type and this is all that we can do when that trigger happens. So let's start with the basic one, just the touch event. You can make it just be a tap, a touch start, touch move, or also touch end. So let's just stick with the tap event and you see it has touch target and this is for if you want to specify a specific thing to tap for it to work. If you don't have this specified then the entire screen will work as the target. So let's add a response type to set enabled. So this is an easy one, this just enables or disables an object. So let's make it disable an object and let's make it disable this little puppy here. So we'll go into our orthographic camera and select our puppy billboard. So now once we tap the screen, the puppy will go away. And let's say we want to specify a target for this. So let's make the target the billboard itself. Now if I tap anywhere else on the screen, it's not going to work. But if I tap on the puppy, then it'll disable. So let's see what else we can do with this. We can also set the texture of this sprite. So again, we're going to set the target to this puppy sprite. And then we're going to add a new texture for it to change to. So let's just use this cute dog texture. So now again, if we tap on the puppy, it'll change the texture to the new one that we selected. Okay, so let's try a different one. Now let's look at face events. This is a great way to get users to interact with the lens by opening their mouth, raising their eyebrows, um, all sorts of things. So let's start with opening your mouth. And we're gonna make the face index zero and if there's more than one person in the scene then the face index would go up. So let's say if there's two people in the scene there would be two indexes, zero and one. And the first person starts with zero and the second person starts with one. So because there's only one person in the scene, we're just going to make the face index stay at zero. And then let's make it so that we have an animated sprite. So I added a face mask in here. And in the face mask, I put this little animation that kind of adds a little Rorschach effect to the face. So we're going to make sure that always play is deselected. And then we're going to go into the behavior script and we're going to select that animated texture and because it's in a face mask it's not going to have a sprite visual but if you did have it on a sprite you could also select that so we want it to play when the mouth opens so let's change the preview to a video where they open their mouth and now you can see once she opens her mouth it starts playing we can also make it so that it stops playing if it's already set to always play so now it's always going to be playing, but when she opens her mouth, it'll stop playing. And we can also make it pause, so that when she opens her mouth, it stops, but it doesn't completely go away. Okay, so let's look at another one. So now we're going to get into tweening, and tweens are another script that is provided by Lens Studio. And this is a really great way to animate your objects in your scene without having to do custom animations in 3D software or in video software. You can do all of your animating inside Lens Studio. So in order to do that, all you need to do is go to Add New, 
and scroll down to the helper scripts and click tween manager and if you don't see this you're going to want to make sure that your lens studio is up to date and you can check that by clicking on the lens studio tab and check for updates and the current one that i'm on right now is 1.7.1 so make sure that that's updated if it is then add that new tween manager and make sure that the tween manager is at the very top of the scene this is so that it renders first and the animations will work properly. So inside this tween manager is going to be a bunch of example stuff. Let's do this ourselves just to show you. So once you add that you'll see a bunch of example stuff shows up. Oops, I have that inside the old one that I made. And all you're going to want to do is just delete these. If you want to go through and look at what those tweens do, that will help you understand them a little better. But we'll go through some of those tweens in this video. So to start, I added an arrow as a face sprite. So it's now attached to the face on the left side and inside the sprite, so I added a tween transform script. So what that does is it'll move, rotate, or scale any object that you have. It can be 2D or 3D. If you're just working with an orthographic billboard, you'll want to use the tween billboard for that but because this is a face sprite and it's operating in 3d space we're going to want it to be a tween transform so all i have is it ping ponging which means it's going back and forth between values from x equals one to x equals zero so you can see it's just ping ponging back and forth if we had it just loop it would just go like this or if we just did it once it would go once and then never do it again but we're gonna have a ping pong because that looks pretty cool and we have it set to play automatically. So if you want this to work, all you have to do is attach the script inside the object that you want it to work on, and it'll start working its magic. But let's say we want to use the tween script outside of the object, and we want to reference it somewhere else. So for organization, we're going to put all of our tweens under the tween manager script. And for this one, I made it arrow tweens. So what I have here is a couple of tweens that rotate the arrow around the face. So I am using the tween transform here to rotate it negative 90 degrees so that it goes up to the top of the face. And let's try and trigger this response. So let's do the touch event then. So we're going to change the touch target to the arrow. And then what we're going to do is we are going to change the response type to run tween. So now when we have the run tween, this is where we can specify the tween that we want to run and we can also choose the action to start, stop, pause, or resume. And I also added a little bit of coding to this script to be able to reset as well, and we'll get into that a little bit later. So let's do the start one. So we want this animation to start once we tap the arrow. But we're going to want to specify the target object, which is a little bit different than the target objects before. So this target object is actually going to be the scene object arrow tweens that we put our tweens in because that's what references what we have here and you're also going to want to make sure that you name all of your tweens because that's also something that you're going to need to call. So we're going to pick our target object here arrow tweens and this allows it to search through all of the tweens that we put inside this object and then we have to pick the specific tween name that we made so this in this case it's going to be arrow up and it's going to start this tween so once we tap on the arrow it's going to rotate the arrow upwards but then it also kind of just goes back down. And we also made a tween to make it rotate back to the bottom. So let's add another behavior script in here. And let's set the trigger to tween end. So this is going to take the target object of this tween arrow up. And once the arrow up tween ends, we're going to run another tween. And it's going to be in the same arrow tweens object. This one's called arrow down. And it's going to start now once the tween ends. So let's click this again. It goes up, and once it ends, it runs the new tween. Okay, so let's look at a different one now. So here we have a sphere. And you can see that the sphere is off the view of the camera. And what I'm doing here is I'm making a set of tweens. So the first tween that's going to happen is it's going to move onto the screen. And then once that happens, it's going to change the color and then once the color is done changing it's going to fade 
but the problem is is that we have all of these tweens that we want to happen in succession we want them to happen one after another and I don't want to have to create a behavior script to find that the end of each event so what we're going to use is the sphere chain and what the sphere chain does is it allows you to take all of those individual tweens and put them together in a chain to do so if you see here I took all of these tween names and I added them here down the tween names in the order that I want them to run and I also specified the scene object uh, where all those tweens are housed and I named this sphere chain so if we clicked play automatically let's just see how it works it'll first move it change the color and then fade it out and back in so you have to make sure that play automatically is unchecked if you want to be able to reference it in the behavior script so let's add a behavior script here and again let's use this touch event let's run the tween chain Oops. so we're gonna click sphere chain and then add that name sphere chain So now once we tap it it'll run that chain and you keep tapping it you'll see it kinda loops back but let's say we want this to reset so this is where I added a little bit of code to the behavior script so that you can reset your tween as a response. So let's say we want this to reset to the original value and move back off screen once it's done. So we're going to add another behavior script in here and we're going to do that tween end trigger again. We're going to go to the sphere chain, type that name in here, and then once it's done we're going to reset the object. So now once the sphere chain is done running it'll reset back to the original values and it'll go off the screen. So let's try this. Okay so now it resets and it goes back. So if you want to use the behavior script with the reset function that I added you can just click in the description below and download the new script. Alright, well thanks for watching everyone. I hope that you learned a little bit here. And if you have any suggestions for other tutorial videos that I can make, go ahead and let me know in the comments.